It's already that time again, my favorite plants of March. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Rose, my pronouns are she, her, and in this video, I'm showing you my favorite plants of March. While I have you here, it really helps if you give this video a thumbs up at the start of watching. So thank you so much and let's get started. Let's just start with a very small one. I decided to start upstairs this time. As you can maybe see behind me, that's my bed. That's my huge monstera that lives here. Look at this beauty. This is a Begonia chlorosticta that <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good at growing them. So the previous one that I had died back all the way very quickly. And this one did as well, <laughs> but this one didn't die all the way. So you can see here, there is a new leaf growing. This small leaf was new as well. And then that tiny baby one up there, which I am so happy with. It is making a comeback. I feel like this, this video today is about leaves that are coming back or that are growing again for the first time in a long time. So. That's the first one. I got a ton of new plants, by the way, from the Botanica market, but also from friends and in the mail. I'm not gonna include those in this video, even though I got them in March, but then the whole video would be new plants. And I actually show a whole of that next week in the Botanica video. Let's go up in size and keeping to that making a comeback theme. Ooh. This is next up. I've showed you this one before. This is my Hoya Clemenciorum with the beautiful veining. Like you can see here, this is a leaf that it grew during the renovation, but that was all it did for such a long time. It did have this long tendril that nothing happened on for a long time. And now finally it is growing again, not just here with this new leaf, but also another leaf up here. Look at that. And there's a new little tendril here as well. Plus I just noticed that there might be a new tendril growing here as well. With Hoya, I don't know if you know, maybe I should make a separate video about this, but they grow tendrils first. So a little, it looks like a runner if you're used to aeroids. Then if you give it the right conditions, meaning it feels secure, that's why I tie it up on a bamboo stake and it's facing upwards, then it will start to grow leaves on this tendril that looked basically dead before. And you can see that here happening as well because this part is facing down. It feels like it can't grow from here from any of these nodes. So now it's activated this node that is still has the ability to then start growing up again. I don't know if I should give any care tips during these monthly favorites videos, but here we go. The leaves still look very, they're actually growing pretty fast. They look beautiful. And I noticed that here on the other side of this new leaf, there's also a tiny leaf. There's always the tiny leaves on the tendrils, but it's just a matter of them getting activated. And it looks like this other side also is getting activated. Here are the updated Clemenciorum leaves since filming. They have grown quite a bit. There's also some mealybugs on there. I'll kill them in a sec. Did you know you have to be really, really careful with new Hoya leaves? Much more even than with Anthurium leaves or something. And that's why Hoya Clemenciorum made it on the list. And lastly, I want to show you Pallidiflorum very carefully because my Pallidiflorum in before leaves, as you can see here, this has been ripped because it was sitting right next to where I was working. And then I dropped it as well. So this one fell apart. I'm holding it together with sticky tape and there's lots of bits that have broken off. But this newest leaf, can you see it? is still in one piece. It is beautiful and velvety. I'm gonna bring it towards you, but very carefully, because I don't want to hurt this again. Look at this. I don't know if the velvet will come across. I feel like this is the only belt anthurium, so with long, long, strappy leaves, that has this real type of suede velvet look. And look how long it is. It starts here, all the way down here. Hey! too long to get in one frame maybe like this there we go <laughs> so I'm gonna be very careful with this until it's hardened off okay safe since filming the pallidiflorum florum that lives above the bed here has sized up so much each evening it gets closer to where my boyfriend sleeps isn't that huge and amazing let's move downstairs for the rest of the plants my Selaginella wilden dowie which <laughs> Mickey is on the cat litter box. <laughs> 
So I made this little vase with plastic on top of it to keep these cuttings growing because the way that these Selaginella plants grow, they make a little tendril and then every branch keeps growing roots down into the ground. It's actually really beautiful and I hope that these will happily grow out this way. The main plant is in my big terrarium and it is beautiful, but because it actually grows quite big, it was taking over a little bit more. I love the blue color. Okay, clap. This was, yeah, noch mehr chance over. I love the blue color of the leaves. It is an incredibly beautiful one. And I'm hoping to keep it growing with these two cuttings in a vase. Next up, we have a philodendron that's growing in my small terrarium. This is philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. And I remember when I first saw this, it has a really cool pattern on the leaf here. They were <laughs> super expensive back then, like 400 euros for a one node cutting or something. There's a little yellow leaf here. Let's take that off so it looks prettier. <laughs> this is one of the plants that I didn't think I would ever grow because of the price. I did not expect the prices to drop so much and then to have a friend who gave me a cutting. I propagated it several times so that there's three plants growing on this pole. This is one of the new leaves here. Behind is another new leaf. And then at the top here, I don't know if this will come across, but when this plant matures, it actually loses. Do you see that? The pattern on the leaves is gone. Here it was still a little bit present but it just disappears when it gets big. So I'm not quite sure if I should extend the moss pole because this is growing out the top or if I should chop it back and restart so that we keep getting these beautiful patterned leaves, which is why I love this plant. But I'm also curious to see how big this can get. Like, does it actually grow as big as a Monstera? I don't know. It's something to think about. Let me know what you think in the comments, please, because maybe one of you has already grown it out and I would love to hear. It's still beautiful. It's still very, I don't know, very cool texture, beautiful colors. The backs are a little bit reddish. So I'm very happy with how this is going and growing. Next up, I picked Hoya Waimanie, but as I took it out of the terrarium, it lives in a small terrarium. I noticed that one of the cuttings actually fell out. It looks like some of the roots rotted. Can you see how thin they are? So I guess this needs some attention, but why I picked it is because one of the plants is growing new leaves and these tiny little velvet new babies are just so beautiful. I don't know if it comes across because they're still very small. Here's a older leaf. When they are not sun-stressed is when I love these the most. They're a little bit velvety, especially when they're babies. And when they are sun-stressed, they actually get an interesting pattern, like a six-pack type of pattern that I personally don't like as much as the normal green leaves. So maybe I have to give this a little bit less light because you can see it turning a little bit purple. I feel like Hoya Waimanie is pretty underrated in the Hoya lover's world, so Maybe this inspires you to try it if you like Hoya. Then we have the Monstera Mint Thai Consolation or Platinum. We still don't know the official name. I got this cutting from a friend and the cutting itself was very, very thin. Can you see the stem? Ah! This cutting was very, very thin. As you can maybe see here, the stem, like it was a very thin slice, but there is a growth point. It is alive. It's gonna grow a little baby leaf. I am very relieved because when I got this, I wasn't sure if it would live. It did grow roots, but with the thin slice of stem, there were, I did see two nodes on it, but they were both really on the edge of the cutting. So I was a little bit worried, but it's growing well. Since filming, I noticed that I think the second node over there is also being activated. So now you can see a little bit, this is really on the edge of this side of the cut. And then this, was literally growing to the side of the cutting, but it's growing. So we might get two babies. I'm very excited to see what this will look like as little tiny, can you imagine? To a little tiny baby mint monstera leaves. <laughs> Next up, the plant that I got together with that other plant, this is my philodendron Ilsamani. If you know about Ilsamani, you know how special they are, but you can also see 
but this one has zero variegation at the moment. There is four leaves and no variegation. This plant can look incredible. If you know the type of variegation of like Whipple Way, the white, it's very specific to certain plants only. It's not like a normal variegation on a Monstera. And I am very excited because it's growing a new leaf over here. So we will see. Also this plant, it's not like a Monstera where you have to see a line of variegation on the stem for it to stay in the plant. This plant can just grow a fully variegated leaf after four leaves of green. So you never know with this plant and it can always, it's like in the genetics, so it can always come back. Maybe I should have waited to show you this when it is unfurled, but I just got very excited. And actually most of the plants that I'm currently excited about are just leaf points, as you may have noticed, because it's just starting up again with the growth. I've had a lot of challenges with the plants and they're starting to finally grow again and be happy again. I started fertilizing again as well. So hopefully this will have some variegation. If it doesn't, I'm not worried. I'm just gonna continue growing it until I get some again. <laughs> so I don't mind. I like it this way as well. It's a cool shape. Then we have this beautiful anthurium. This is an interesting name. Anthurium papillilaminum legend sipanas crossed with papillilaminum old cologne and this is an older leaf oh, look at that velvet it's so shimmery and i also really love the shape of papillae laminum hybrids oh it's dripping water this is an older leaf a little bit yellow e yeah. okay wait okay i poured some of the excess water out so the plant used to be in a little bit more light that's why these older leaves are a little bit more bleached and then this one looks perfectly beautiful and dark. And now we have this one. It came out in a prop box, but I recently moved it there because my other anthurium, my crystallinum, really likes it there and grows really big leaves in lower light conditions. So we're gonna see if that works on this one as well. The velvet, the redness, the shape. I love this one. The last plant I want to show you, I've showed you many times before, is Thais my Thai constellation, mainly because he is now growing a new leaf and I'm so excited. The last leaf he grew came out in October and it is now the end of March. So it's been a long time and I hope that during this, it's now spring, maybe during the spring summer season, he will grow a few more. But for now, I'm just very, very excited that we have a new one. I can't wait to see the variegation on it and the amount of fenestrations and just Woo! Yay! Since filming, the leaf has really opened, so I wanted to show you a quick update. Look at this, it again has a big sectoral patch of variegation. A little bit hard to see with this grow light and a lot of holes. I love it so much! And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe below if you haven't already and leave a nice comment. You can also join my YouTube and Patreon memberships where we have a monthly Zoom call and a private Discord chat. Thank you. I really appreciate you even for just being here and watching my videos all the way till the end. And I hope you have a wonderful week.